The official F1 game has just undergone probably the second biggest update that any F1 games ever had, second only to the previous update, which I made a video on. So today we're going to run through exactly what is in that update. There's two big changes which we're going to hit in the same clip here. Uh, first of all, the Imola circuit has been added to the F1 2021 game, which is absolutely awesome. It's such a classic, amazing circuit. And as promised, they have added it in the October update uh, completely for free as well. They've also added the white Red Bull livery, which is a special one-off livery uh, that they ran for the Turkey Grand Prix that was supposed to be on the car for the Japanese Grand Prix as a kind of thank you to Honda. They've added that actually as, as a little temporary uh limited time addition to the game so that will be probably removed in the next update so enjoy that while it lasts so let's get to the first impressions both of the red bull car and of course the imola circuit here we go then loading in for my very first laps on the imola circuit in f1 2021 i'm really excited for this we're also going to be using the beautiful new white red bull here we go i'm actually running a default setup now i didn't want to try it with it with a potentially a bit of a weird setup to begin with so out on track here the white red bull in our hands and here we go i love that they've done the curbs exactly like they are in real life obviously not surprising but still it's cool to see them like that it's quite a unique curb setup of course with the italian flag so far the curbs were quite nice portimao was really nice because it was a, it was a very modern track designed effectively for this game to, to feel nice on this game with some tracks like spa a little bit old and they don't feel too great there's a, there's a slight line. I'm actually going to turn the graphic setting up uh, up to max again because there's a slight line that you can see, which I don't want you guys to think is something weird with the with the game. So I'm going to turn that up to ultra. We're still going to switch off ray tracing, even though that shouldn't apply in the in the actual when you're playing the game. It should only be in the menus and replays and stuff. And there we go. Those lines are now gone. So uh, here we go. They're coming through. The curbs are quite harsh, though, I will say. There's, there is a bit of a bump to them. The outside ones seem okay. The inside ones, there is like a little bit of a bump as you go on them. Like that. It's just a little bit of a, a, a hill, but... I, that doesn't surprise me. I feel like I, that, I do recall that in real life. So far, this feels pretty good. Quite a lot of grip. The bumps are just nice. The curbs are just nice. There's, there's no red flags so far on this circuit, which is really great to see. Sending it here. Oh, a little bit wide. Okay, that's the track limit. Fair enough. I was across the white line there. Is it flat for this first part? Or maybe. Yeah, it probably is with a half decent setup. There's a bit of curb on the exit. Again, so far, no red flags at all. Now, the chicane's always a big test because it's one you need to sort of launch the car over a little bit. Yeah, that felt about right from one of used to in other games. Not too bad at all. Could probably launch over those curves, but again, need to make sure we keep it clean within track limits. Up for the gears once again. Coming down now to the downhill braking zone. Getting it slowed down just about. A little bit of movement over on the curb there. Felt slightly less grip over there. Right out to the limit of the curb there on the exit. Opening DRS. So we'll leave the first impressions there then, but we'll now go on board with my best lap that I managed to do after about half an hour or so of practice. Also using the time trial setup, the, the top time trial setup that some of the esports guys seem to have been using when they've had access to this track. I think they got access to the track a little bit early so they could practice ahead of the season. So here we go then, coming down the start finish straight that isn't really very straight, but a DRS wide open, no problem at all, breaking about halfway between the 100 meter boards and 50 meter boards on the right hand side there. I'm actually avoiding most of the curbs. I thought I'd end up being all over those sausage curbs because they don't actually affect the car too much. Much, but actually just completely avoiding those and, and, and that's the best way with this setup at least um, still hitting the curbs there I did actually manage to hit the yellow curb there which you just seen, just saw doesn't actually make a big difference to the car which surprises me so I did wonder if perhaps the esports guys would have to keep an eye on their lines uh, whether they're going to be all over those sausage curbs coming up then I finish the first sector and this trick this corner is very very easy to go uh, off track just keeping it within the bounds I was going on to fifth gear there to make sure that we could keep it bounds completely flat with this setup through the first part there this is the only corner that's a little bit dodgy actually with this setup you do get a bit of overs today you have to be a little bit careful uh, through that corner we're making it nice and safe we're breaking pretty deep here into the chicane a little bit of a slide through the mid corner it's all about the exit really from there and uh, doing that reasonably nicely but uh, definitely did it a little bit better previously and uh, almost touching the grass on the exit as well coming to the penultimate corner now on the curb on the entry just taking a bit of curb not full car on the curb once again again all the curbs here just trying to carry as much speed as I possibly can actually did a bit worse from previous lap but overall that is set a tenth up and that's going to give us a 1 minute 14 Point four four zero, a very very nice lap time indeed. So uh, let's go aboard now for an AI race around the Imola circuit. Just before we get into the race, I'm going to very quickly ask you to please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. This channel features all of this kind of content, so if you're enjoying this video, you'll probably enjoy my other videos as well. Always detail orientated F1 game content. So do subscribe to the channel. Let's get back to the video. Here we go then. Sat on the grid for our first race against the AI on Imola. I'm excited for this one. We're going to be running the top time trial setup. Interesting to see how the AI get on. We've got on 105 AI, which is normally kind of an average that works out about right for me, but it's not consistent track to track. 
It's going to get under the way here. And I'm going to back off a little bit. Just let a few people by. Just do a few overtakes and see how it is. That'll do. I say that'll do. We just left a, let almost all of the field. Well, over half of the field by. Know, not half. Exactly half of the field by. Okay, let's just chill here. Let's chill here for now. Around the outside. Oh, wow. Goes Alonso. Someone else is up our inside there. That was Norris. Who we got, who got quite held up by us. Let's see how the ERS is on this track as well. It's going to chill for now. We need to try and get past these guys as quick as we can. Definitely a bit of understeer there in the dirty air. Can we send it here? Yeah. They're quite early on the breaks there on lap one. All kind of bunched each other up a little bit. Back up to P10 then. Let's see how much further we can get up the grid. I'm expecting them to be fairly quick on this circuit. This next turn will probably be quite OP at. Oh, no, not too bad, actually. The AI do seem to be a bit better op optimised for the newer circuits, interestingly. It'll back off there. This is the only corner, really, that we can get some oversteer. So we just been a bit cautious there. Actually, end up going off track, but not get a warning for it, interestingly. A little bit back from Gazi then. So we do seem to be pretty quick on 105, which is about, again, that's about right. Normally 105 is about right. We can definitely take a bit more speed than through there, though. Nailing it over the curbs in this red ball. It's pretty quick in a straight line once you get it up to speed. Can we got the inside of Gazi here? Is he going to defend? No, he's not going to defend. Move done. That is definitely a, a solid overtaking opportunity there, then. Across this five lap race. Right up, the, right up behind Vettel now. Going to use ERS for the run to the line. Try and. Ah, we just now start again. Then we must switch up his overtakes. We're going to go up his inside here. Should be a nice easy move. This will be the default overtaking opportunity when DRS is enabled from lap three, of course. Very quite late there, but we're going to squeeze him out proper Max Verstappen style. Up to P8 it is then. Yeah, Aston Martin, not that quick in this game anymore. But it's had definitely had a big nerf. Good exit there. All over signs. Now let's try and nail him into this next turn. We're going to have to go on the outside though, since he's hogging the inside line, using a lot of ERS to do so as well. Can we break him on the outside? We can squeeze him on the apex. That was probably a bit much, to be honest. He probably deserves a bit more space than that, but never mind. We're sticking with the clerk for now. We're not able to really get up to him. Oh, that's close. He locked up too. Let's try and get the exit. Just so hard to get an exit. It's anywhere near as good as the AIs. Can we stick with his inside here? Is he going to... No, we have to go on his outside again. Bit of contact there. Definitely deserves something this time. Round the outside. Let's go. That's definitely a possible move. We're going to get some DRS now on Lance Stroll. So hopefully nearly down this straight. First time we're able to activate DRS in this race. Should make it a nice easy move. He is going to defend to the inside though. But it shouldn't matter too much. No, it's not going to. The rest zone is actually quite long on this track. The overtaking sh could theoretically be quite easy. Now let's push now. Oh god. Don't get on that inside curve with this setup. Let's push now. We've got a bit of free air. Let's see if we can set a fastest lap of the race. And see how our pace compares to AI. We do indeed get a fast lap of the race. A 15-3. Eight tenths up on our previous best. Let's see how that compares to current best of Sergio Perez, our team at IMP1. He's done a 15.9, so pretty similar. Actually, a 59, that's six tenths, isn't it? I don't know what I'm saying, pretty similar. That's a big chunk of time, so maybe I was wrong. Maybe the AI aren't slightly faster on this track. I did get DRS, of course, which would have helped me a chunk, but uh, I think the AI are actually about right, about, about average on, on this circuit, which is good. Some of them, they are way too quick. We're going to come home in P5 then, but so not definitely the AI aren't too slow since I was only able to get P5. And it wasn't that easy to overtake either, was it? Not like we could fly past them in all sorts of places. But there we go then. That is going to be our first AI race on Imola. So what else has been added to the game then other than Imola and the White Red Bull? Well, most other liveries have also been updated, but only very minor tweaks. It's mostly just little sponsor tweaks to make them more like they are in real life. Which, although it's good to have them like in real life, you know, realistically as a player, you don't really care too much. I think that one's more for the teams and for a contra contractual obligation, to be honest, to make sure all the sponsors are right. In addition, they've also had a compatibility for the CSL DD. Um, previously, when I connected my CSL DD just in PC mode, I had to configure everything myself. Now, when I connect it in PC mode, everything's already configured, but I will say I'm still having an issue. Um, for some reason, my throttle and brake are both locked on 50% minimum. So then when I, when I press the pedal more, it does go on more, but they're just both locked there. The only fix is to either use an inverted pedal or use the compatibility mode for the CSL DD, which is what I was running previously anyway. Um, so although they have added official support, doesn't seem to be quite working nicely yet. There might be a, a, something specific to my will, but um, anyway, CSL DD support is supposedly added. They've also added a unsafe pit release option for multiplayer. Now, this was something that they added to the eSports build, which people were complaining, well, why is it in the eSports special build, but not in the main build? Um, and basically, it allows you to be released from your pit box as soon as your pit stop is finished, even if there's somebody in the uh, pit lane behind you coming down the pit lane. And what will happen is you'll literally just go inside them. You'll just ghost and go inside them, and you, you'll just sort it out on the pit exit. So it's good to see this added. Of course, that's mainly for leagues and that sort of thing, because realistically, otherwise, you know, let's say your, your Mercedes, you're at the, the front of the pit lane, and you 
you're also at the front of the pack. If everyone pits on the same lap, you end up getting held for ages, and it's just not very fair in terms of team selection. So it's good that they've added that, quite a minor change, but it's actually really positive for leagues. They've also added support for AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution, which is basically AMD's version of the DLSS technology, which basically means you can get higher frame rate uh, with, with, with effectively a lower resolution that just gets upscaled uh, on a lower end computer. One of the things most people were very excited for with this update is there's been a handful of online fixes. Now, there's been lots and lots of issues recently. Leagues have even had to, to pause or, or close down because of it because there's just been a, a, just a, a ridiculous number of online issues, more than I've ever known, actually, in the past. Um, highlights of these features, they've now added the countdown timer for when you're waiting for people. You know, sometimes you get stuck when it says waiting for players and you just have to sit there forever. Sometimes you'll even have to quit out of the game because it's just that stuck. They were, they've now added the countdown timer of 30 seconds to that screen. So if people do get stuck... Um, uh, then they'll just get 30 seconds. At the end of that 30 seconds, they actually get kicked out of the lobby, which is potentially a bit harsh because someone with a, with a particularly slow computer might now just not be able to play online. Uh, but uh, it's, still a, it's still a positive change for the 99% of people that, that load in nice and quick. They've also supposedly fixed the desync issue, um, which is basically when on people's different people's screens, you, there can be different things happening. So there'll be perhaps disconnects for some people. So then that card goes AI driven and not disconnects for other people. It's, it's a very weird, inconsistent issue, which seems to have been um, the worst it has been recently. It has happened in the past, a couple of games even, but it's, it seems to have been a lot worse uh, since the previous update in particular. Supposedly they've, they've kind of fixed that now. I'm not able to test that myself because obviously um, I've actually not had it myself really before. Uh, and also, you know, it's, it's one of those things that's not consistent anyway. But supposedly that's fixed. Hopefully that will help leagues run, run their races a bit more reliably. They've also added an Imola 24-7 playlist to online, which I actually really like in the Social Play tab. You've now got the, the Imola playlist, especially for a new track. That is what people want to play at the moment. Uh, so it's really cool they've added that. However, it is still broken. Um, online to me is still just very broken. It, it Honestly, it needs rebuilding from the ground up. Um, I, I tried to enter this lobby. I tried four times. All four times, I just got a fail to join session error for, for no particular reason after about 20 seconds or so of, of, of trying. So I, I honestly don't know what's going on with it. I don't know if that was just me getting unlucky or what, but online is still absolutely played with a million issues. And honestly, I'm glad they're adding fixes to it, which will hopefully help this, this current game. But for next year, I really do genuinely hope that they completely reboot it from the ground up. The network side of it is okay, as in when you're in a lobby, there's not really too much lag and stuff unless someone's got a really bad connection. Um, but all, all of just the, the way that you get into lobbies and the way that you have to search for them and the filters and, and, and the social play and stuff can be broken. For example, the Imola 24-7 lobby, if I was able to get into that, it's completely ghosted. I mean, who buys an official F1 game? They do that because they, they like F1. Who buys an official F1 game and then wants to race online but not really race online to just drive through people. You want collisions, surely. I mean, that, that seems a no-brainer to me. It'd be good if that'd be the sort of thing that they could perhaps put a poll out uh, to ask people. But, that you know, that sort of thing, there just seems to be a few dodgy decisions with online. I honestly think they need to completely scrap it and, and, just, and just, just have a brainstorm and start uh, from the ground up again. But as I said, it is good, still good to see they're applying a few fixes to this game just to make it a bit more stable. In addition to those, there's also lots and lots of smaller fixes. I'm not going to run through all of those. I'm just going to highlight a few of those for you, uh, the few of the big ones that I think are a bit more relevant. So the first one is that they've addressed a handling exploit in lower speed corners. Apparently, some lower speed corners were actually faster to drift through, which is really interesting. Uh, so they fixed that. It wasn't something I noticed before, So, but if, if people were using it, it's good that they have fixed it. They've also adjusted various curves in Bahrain, Monza, and China. Uh, which I, I've had a look and I couldn't actually see any difference. Um, visually, they look exactly the same, but I did notice on Bahrain that the kind of gutters in the curb do seem to, to, to kind of take the car a little bit more. So I just wonder if they've sort of smoothed the curves out a little bit so they affect the car a little, a little bit less. Uh, they've also addressed an issue where floor damage could be accumulated on Spa. Uh, I have actually had this reported by one of our mods, Sanek, before, um, but uh, I, I, didn't, I haven't really noticed that myself. I don't know if he was perhaps using something differently. He's on a pad, um, but uh, apparently that's been resolved. Now, Spa also, I'm hoping Spa gets completely resolved built for next year because spa is i think for f1 2011 it's not a uh, it's, it's not been updated since and it's just not a good circuit to be honest uh they, they just need to completely redo it from from the ground up even perhaps with laser scans uh they've also added a leadable percentage ranking which is uh to, to time trial which i actually really like uh you know at a glance you can just see how, how am i doing compared to everybody because realistically 99.99 percent of people can't get into that top 10 zone um so rather than just saying oh you're 485th that's great. What does that mean? It's good they've got a little percentage now. I do like that little addition. As you can see as well, there's lots and lots of other updates they've added. As I said, I'm not going to read those out, but they are on screen now for you to look at. 
And there we go then, that's the latest update to the F1 2021 game. Again, I'm really impressed with what Codemaster slash EA are doing with this game this year. They're adding content after the fact, um, you know, months after release. Also, really like the release schedule they're doing. So they're doing a track a month. You know, we had we had Portimao last month. We're getting Imola this month. And next month, we're going to get the Saudi Arabian uh, Jeddah circuit, which I don't think is going to be a great circuit. But it's good that we're getting it in game anyway. So I like that they're spreading out a little bit. Uh, who knows what will also be added to, to that game. Hopefully a few more bug fixes and, and the like as well. So um, I'm really impressed with, with the updates they've been doing. I mean, this game was released way back in was it july uh so sort of more or less six months onward on uh well not quite that four four five months on we're still doing huge updates updates to the games so it's really good to see anyway guys don't forget to subscribe if you're new and i thank you for watching bye bye